Hello everybody, I'm Eric Walker for AllForSciFi.com and today we're going to review Season 2, Chapter 10 of The Mandalorian. It's called The Passenger. But before we get started, I just wanted to remind everybody, please below here hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we upload a video like this. Also, another reason to subscribe to the channel is we do a live podcast every week. And during that podcast, we have a live trivia game where you could win free prizes. In fact, next week's prize is a very big one. It's a Monopoly, it's the Child Monopoly game by Parker Brothers. So let's go ahead and get started. At all for sci-fi, we have an official rating of zero to five stars. Five stars being the best, of course. If it's three stars or less, then we don't recommend you stream it, or in case it's a movie review, we don't recommend you go to the movies. I know out here in Los Angeles, where I'm located, you still can't go to the movies because of this pandemic. So um, hopefully the movie theaters will open up soon. But let's go ahead and talk about The Passenger. Okay, so this uh, episode uh, is directed by Peyton Reed. And I just wanted to point out, Peyton Reed also is a very well-known movie director. He directed all the Ant-Man uh, movies. He directed Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and he's working on Ant-Man 3 right now. So he's a very big time director. Uh, earlier in his career, he directed some other uh, movies like Bring It On and some other ones. So he's done a lot of work. So it's really great to see that uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni are really bringing out, they're pulling out the big guns and having big time directors direct some of these episodes and different directors this season, which I'm also very pleased to see as well. Um, the Passenger uh, also uh, brings back Misty Rojas and Misty Rojas uh, played, uh, she was the inside of the costume for Quill uh, last season, even though it was, uh, the, the other big time actor uh, uh, did the voice for it. So it's nice to see Misty Rojas back and they're bringing back a lot of characters, but let's go ahead and give the official All for Sci-Fi review and rating. Uh, at All for Sci-Fi, uh, the rating for The Passenger Chapter 10 is 4.80 stars. Yes, I am giving it a very high rating again. This episode kept us, you know, at the edge of our seats. It was kind of, uh, you know, it was jumping up and down. It, it just was a really great overall episode. And it's a, and I, I really love the way, the direction that this franchise is going. Let's go ahead and right now we're going to get into spoilers. So if you haven't seen the episode, you could come back later and uh, watch the rest of this review. Okay, so this episode uh, basically uh, starts right where the last one took off. And uh, we see uh, the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, and the child coming, still uh, going through the desert on the speeder bike. And then suddenly these bandits appear. And they're, they're going to try to, uh, they are, they're going to do the old Ewok trick from uh, Return of the Jedi, where they put the rope and hide it and then pull it up. So <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny and maybe a nod to the, the uh, Return of the Jedi. Um, so uh, they go ahead and... Uh, dig a little, uh, small little trench. They put the rope there. So when the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, and the child are going past it, they pull the rope. It trips the speeder bike. The speeder bike starts flipping. The Mandalorian is, has to use his jet pack to try to land properly. He almost, uh, almost loses it. Of course, the child, we're all freaking out. He's tumbling over and falling. It's like, oh no, not the child. And, uh, but Din Djarin gets up quickly. And these band and goes after these bandits. And one of the things I really like about uh, most of these episodes are the fight scenes. Uh, the fight scene was wonderful. I wish they did more. I want to. I want more than one fight scene an episode. So guys, if you're listening and you're seeing this uh, this uh, review, add a few more fight scenes. Maybe another one near the end uh, to uh, make it full rounded. So uh, he's getting in a big fight, and then one of the littler uh, bandits. Uh, who kind of looks like a weird-looking Jawa, but doesn't have the, the eyes, um, grabs the child and puts puts a knife to the child, like he's going to kill the child. So Din starts negotiating with him, and uh, he, he says, take whatever you want. The, the, in the wreckage there, that bike, and uh, that, that you could salvage that, and there's plenty of stuff here. Take anything you want, but don't you harm a hair on that child. Otherwise, you cannot hide from me if you hurt that child. So um, the little little person bandit that's not a Jawa but looks like one uh, decides that he wants Din's jetpack. 
So he takes off the jetpack, he sets it down, and uh, they make the trade. And then the baby, really cute, runs up over and puts his arms up to his daddy. Oh, daddy, I'm here. Oh, daddy. <laughs> like that. Kind of like, well, not kind of like that, but <laughs> you get the point. So he, and so the uh, bandit then uh, starts to walk away and Din on his uh, little arm uh, uh, gadget, hits the button, so the bandit shoots up in the air on the jetpack, and then later falls to his death, and the baby's looking at it, looking up, oh, poor little bandit who tried to kill me. Hmm. He's gonna die a horrible death by falling because daddy shot the jetpack way up in the sky. <laughs> so he falls down, and then, of course, Din brings the jetpack back down, and all is well, except for now, what are they going to do? They're in the middle of a desert, and their speeder bike is destroyed. So, what do they do? He packs everything up, and he walks all the way over back, the long walk to Mos Eisley. So, he gets back there, and when he gets into the town, he goes into the bar, the famous bar from A New Hope and all the other movies. And he walks up to uh, the, the lady at the hangar, uh, uh, Pele Moto, played by Amy uh, Sirtis. And it's great to see her again. They're using the same actors, and that's great. So he she, he walks up to her. She's playing a card game with this very unique-looking ant creature, which reminds me a lot of uh, some of the old Ralph McQuarrie drawings, the little ant creature. And uh, I couldn't help notice that the director directed all the Ant-Men movies, and they put an ant creature in the Mandalorian. Wonder if that was by accident. I don't think so. So uh, they're they're playing their game, and uh, of course she's talking to Din, and she looks down and sees the Mandalorian helmet, Boba Fett's helmet, and says, "You finally found a Mandalorian, and then you killed him." You know, so there's some comic relief there, and it's great. And he goes, "No, I didn't kill him. He wasn't a Mandalorian." He just had his armor, so I, I, I bought the armor off him. And uh, she goes, "What that set you back?" You know, she's a great character. He says, "Oh well, I had to kill a crate dragon." <laughs> Only in Star Wars and The Mandalorian would someone say they bought something, but then they killed a crate dragon. And uh, so uh, he, he's, he needs to find more Mandalorians. And the ant person, who's actually a doctor too says that he knows someone who knows where some Mandalorians are. So if Din will go ahead and, and call and do, call this round on his bet, he'll tell him how to find some more Mandalorians. He knows someone that knows where uh, there's a covert close by. So um, he go, okay, what's it going to cost me? 500 credits. Okay, so he throws the 500 credits down. And of course, the character Pele Moto, the funny wisecracking lady in the hangar, one and she knew she was gonna win she just wanted some more money trying to pull it out of den so the the character this character is just a great character and uh so the ant the doctor ant tells him that he'll send the person who knows where the mandalorian is to the hangar uh that's part of the reason why he called for the bed so they go back to uh go back to her hangar and on the way there she says i hope you have some of that uh, crate dragon meat and it better not have any maggots on it <laughs> So they get back there, and then then you see it goes to where they're in the hangar, and just like in Galaxy's Edge, uh, they're using an engine to cook uh, uh, to cook the crate dragon meat, which is incredible. You know, it's so the the nuances and and the repetition is nice to see because even at Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Uh, over there where you get the Rondo wraps, they have that uh, setup where, they're, where the, the engine is cooking uh, all the meat, which is great to see it again. They're using the same sort of things uh, in the Star Wars universe. And I can't say that enough. I've said it so many times already, but it's, it's nice to see that there's some great continuity going on here. So um, basically the next series of events is suddenly uh this uh she the person who knows where the mandalorians are is a lady who's uh i'm just going to call her the frog lady because in the credits it said frog frog lady and that frog lady is being played by misty rojas who i mentioned earlier so but the frog lady it's her husband who who has seen mandalorians and know where they are but 
the catch and the deal is uh, the Mandalorian Din has to give her transport to where her husband's at, and uh, she has uh, this uh, uh, the her eggs who need to be fertilized by her husband. She needs to take them to where he's at, otherwise. They're the last of their species, this frog species. And I didn't think it was a frog species until I saw it in the credits. I thought she looked more like a cross between a frog and like a gecko or a lizard. Uh, funny thing, though, my wife and I were watching the episode. She said immediately it looks like a frog. And that's before I even looked it up in the credits. So my wife is smarter than I am, apparently. So, um, and, and also, uh, when they're negotiating and talking... Uh, this uh, this lady, Paley Moto, who set all this up, the hangar lady, she knows her language. So she's speaking the language, and she was also speaking the ant language. Boy, this woman's smart. She's not only funny, but she's smart. And it's great to see that they're having strong women in Star Wars that are smart, intelligent, and wisecracking. So, the you know, Din doesn't like it uh, because there's another catch. It's not just the transportation, but now, because of the eggs... He, can, he has to travel at sub-light speed. He can't even travel at light speed, which is very dangerous now to, to travel at a slow speed because there's too many bandits out there. So he, he, even though he says he's not a taxi service, he agrees to it because he needs to find more Mandalorians on his quest to, to help the child. Uh, and I noticed in this episode they're calling it the child, the kid, a lot. So maybe he got older. Also, in this episode, the kid is, it, he steals the show. I mean, he's... We're getting to see more of him in this episode than the last one, and uh, he's he's a very mischievous, <laughs> just like a kid, uh, doing things he shouldn't be doing. So, uh, and that was great to see to get to see the the more of the child. And again, he does steal this 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 particular episode. He steals the show, even at the end. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But um, so they agree to go and they leave and. You know, of course, uh, this character, this hangar lady's wisecracking about, you know, she trusts, you know, this uh, this information to be good. She trusts this frog lady with her life. But then later she says she just met her 10 minutes ago, which is more wisecracking. But there's just so much of this great comic humor, uh, great timing. Uh, the music, by the way, by Ludwig is spot on again. We're starting to get used to these themes that he... He's, he's created in different ways he's playing. He's actually, you hear the same theme, the Mandalorian theme in different ways. And I think that's great, by the way, with different musical instruments, because you know I'm a musician. Uh, I, get, I really appreciate the music by, by this genius who I, I'm calling the next John Williams, Ludwig. He's that good. So um, they go ahead and uh, take off. And uh, he's not a happy a camper about it then because they're traveling at sublight speed, but they go ahead and leave. And he tells the lady to strap in, please, while you're traveling, stay strapped in in case there's trouble. Um, but because it's going to take so long, I'm going to go take a nap. So as he's going down, down, down to take a nap, he catches the kid in, getting inside the eggs. And, and uh, the kid ate one of the eggs. <laughs> the poor woman, it's the last of her species and the child's eating her, 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 uh, her offspring. And he grabs the child and says, no, don't do that. Don't do that. No. And then he puts, uh, he go, takes the child and said, we're going to take a nap. And he puts the child in a hammock right above his bed. Isn't that the cutest, Dan? You're such a daddy. So uh, he goes to sleep with the child. And then uh, it goes to the next scene where uh, you hear the alarm go off because uh, there's other aircraft, there's other uh, speeders by, not speeders, but there's other starships or spacecraft by so the alarm goes off so he wakes up goes up uh, back up to the cockpit uh the frog lady's sleeping of course um just like he was um and in fact she wakes up in the middle of him talking but the the the, the alarm went off because two x-wings show up and one of the x-wing pilots is played by of course the executive producer of the show dave filoni who plays Trapper Wolf, and we also get a new character, a Captain uh, Captain Tova, played by Paul Sung Hung Lee, who's a very famous Korean actor. At first, I thought maybe he was just someone they brought back from the original Star Wars, but he's not. He's just a new character, and you've seen his face. He's done over 60-something uh, movies, so that's why you've seen him before. So um, they're asking him why his uh, beacon is not you know, tra transponding. And he says, well, I don't have to have a beacon. 
in a transponder because I'm not part of, uh, you know, I'm part of the old uh, guard. I don't have to do that. And they said, no, this is under New Republic jurisdiction. So you, in this area, you do have to have a beacon and a transponder showing who you are. So they're asking for it, and uh, he's about he go his he he goes ahead and finally reluctantly does it for a second. I think he leaves it on because uh, I didn't see him turn it off. But then he sees that they're opening up their guns like they're going to do something, so he runs. So the chase is on, and uh, he goes down to the planet, which is an ice icy planet. I don't think it's Hoth. I don't know what the planet is. Maybe you guys could tell me in the comments what this uh, ice planet is if it's a different one. And some of that, when he was going down into the ice, it reminded me of some of the trench stuff from uh, from the old um, Star Wars movie when they're in the trenches, but they're in a trench in, in this icy world. And to get away from them, he hides inside this cave, and then they lose the signal, and while he landed on this ice in a cave, it it's uh, the Razor Crest is too heavy, so it falls all the way down, long, real far down, and basically... It gets almost destroyed this ship and it knocks all everybody out the because they fell so far so everybody's knocked out then it comes back up with them waking up sometime later the frog lady is uh, is freezing and sleep um din gets up and says i'm gonna get you some covers and he goes down to make sure that the kid is okay the kid is missing so he has to go and find the kid and he catches him again doing what he's not supposed to be doing this child this mischievous little child so um he get, grabs the child, grabs everything, comes back up into the cockpit, and uh, they're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, t he says it's almost nightfall. There's nothing we can do. Let's just go to sleep and wake up. And she's all speaking in the frog language, and he says that's when we know it's a frog species because he says, sorry, lady, I don't speak frog. So after all that happens, um, they go to sleep. The kid, of course, goes up to his daddy. It's so cute and goes to sleep. He's woken up by this lady saying, Mandalorian, wake up. But it's not the lady. It's she has to communicate to him. So she rewires the old robot, the bad one from last season that he still has. And because it has a translator, she's able to speak to him. And she's telling him, Mandalorian, you need to get up. We need to go now. These eggs need to be fertilized. It's, it's the last of my species. And he's saying, lady... The deal is off. Things have changed. And she gets very upset. She tells him, I thought the Mandalorians have this uh, code. And when they say they do something, they're going to do it. Why aren't you doing that? I guess Mandalorians aren't who they are. Maybe that's just stories we told children. So she really gets underneath Din's skin. He gets up in a huff, grabs uh, some tools. Go, okay, I'm going to go fix it so we can get you. Uh, and I could do my part of the deal and get you transported to your husband. So he goes outside, starts working on it, some time goes by, and then we see the child, like, motioning to the dad, come here, dad, come here, dad, and he's letting his dad know that the lady wandered off. So now that the lady wandered off, um, he has to now go with the child and try to find the lady. So that's a whole other thing that they're doing. And uh, so now that the lady has wandered off, he and the child have to go find her. So they go through these caverns and they find her in this uh, really this pool that's like uh, on Earth. If we have, uh, you know, water sources that are heated because of volcanic activity. So she's in this really heated like sauna pool and she's taking the eggs out. And, you know, because she's trying to she's the mother and she's trying to keep them warm. He comes up to her and says, you can't be out here like this. This is a dangerous planet. We don't know what's going on so he starts he says lady you got to come back so he's helping her gather the eggs and of course the kid wanders off because uh and he, he sniffs and he smells something the, this kid eats everything and he's hungry he's smelling other eggs and he walks up to this area where there's an egg and he cracks it open and he's eating this whatever it is we don't know what it is but he's eating another egg this kid never stops eating things uh, last season it was frogs so because of that and him making all this commotion, all the other eggs open, and guess what they are? They're all spiders. Wow. And they kind of look a little bit like the spiders from uh, the Clone Wars, but they're not because, uh, you know, later they're shooting at them, and, and we know in the Clone Wars you couldn't kill them that way. Um, so the kid 
He's running back down to his daddy, warning him they're all waking up. So they get in this great, great scene where all these spiders are chasing him. Even at one point, a big mama spider is coming after them. And Din takes some uh, charges and he throws them and blows one of them up. And they finally make it back to the Razor Crest. Uh, they get they, they the spiders chase them all the way back up into the into the cockpit, and uh, they're trying to you know he, Dan is trying to seal it, and they're coming through. Some of the a couple of them do get through, and they're starting to bother the child. And then you hear these laser blasts. Pew, 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 pew. Where'd those come from? Because Dan's over here trying to keep them from coming in, and it goes over to the frog lady who is firing a little little phase pistol she has, and she saves the child. So she shows that, she, again, mother instinct, and uh, Din goes, uh, he uses his, uh, uh, on his arm, he uses his fire uh, thing, uh, fire shooter, to seal the hatch, and it looks like they're, at least for a moment, okay. Um, but, so he gets into, uh, he gets into, uh, he straps himself in, he says, let's try to get off this, uh, this rock. They start, he starts his ship, they start to take off, and then another big, huge, gigantic one, it's as big as a razor crest, spider, another, maybe another mama one, jumps down on them, causes the razor craft to go back to the ground. It uh, shoots its uh, its, uh, its legs that are like spikes through it, almost kills Din and uh, the frog lady and them. Um, and then it tries to get in through the hole, through the glass. You see its teeth. It's, I mean, I'm on the edge of my seat this entire time. I'm freaking out. It's uh, great action and scary. So uh, finally, and then suddenly you start hearing these laser blasts again outside. A lot of them. And what's going on here? So Din goes down, th goes back through the ship that's all wreckage and through the hole that's blown open. And he sees it's the X-Wing pilot's uh, Dave Filoni uh, and uh, this captain, uh, played by Paul Hung Sung Lee, and uh, Dave Filoni plays Trapper Wolf. It's the X-Wing pilots again. So they let him know that he has a, a, an arrest warrant for him. But they also know that the Mandalorian helped save one of their commanders. And not only that, but he also helped... Remember last season, he helped round up some of those prisoners? So all of that counts. And he, at one point, the Mandalorian says, So am I under arrest? And then the captain says, No. Under the circumstances, since these are trying times, you're not. So then he tries to get them. He says, I'll give you uh, some of the bounties if you help me uh, seal my hull so I could take off. Of course, the captain says, No, we're not going to help you. Uh, just get that transponder and beacon thing um, fixed so next time you transmit we don't blow this antique out of the sky <laughs> the lines the dialogue great writing john you're doing a great job john and uh, you're bringing back all these characters you're making us love star wars again thank you so much for what you're doing john favreau and dave filoni and kathleen kennedy thank you for letting this series go on. I can't wait to see some of the stuff that's coming in the future. Din says the, the best thing that he could do is try to seal the hull so at least they could escape. And so he does a little bit of work and uh, they take off. They're on their way again. Uh, they could only stay inside the, the cockpit because it's the only part of the ship that's pressurized. So they're stuck in there, but at least they're moving forward. And right at the end, the frog lady looks at the child and goes like this to her eggs because I think she knows that that kid's uh, eating some of it. And then Din goes to sleep and the child turns around and right at the last, the last shot is him eating the egg, eating another egg, this child. He's, I, like I said, he steals the show. But that's it. That's the end of the episode. We're on to next week. I can't wait wait to do another review uh, uh next week we'll have chapter 11 of the mandalorian and this has been really great guys if this is the first time you run across any of our videos please remember just hit the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you're notified because you want to know when we uh upload new videos uh also you want to know when we go live because we do the live trivia game and you could win free prizes given to you from the channel all you have to do is watch 
the live podcast because we do trivia during it and answer the question correctly and you have a chance to win a free prize for free sent out to you and we've given a lot of gifts away already this year COVID stopped us for a little while but we're on track right now so don't forget to subscribe and uh you know i want to also give a shout out to uh all for sci-fi the official sponsor is order 66 toys out there in dallas texas thank you guys for your sponsorship also thank you to the cswc the community of star wars collectors on facebook make sure you go to facebook look up the community of star wars collectors and follow that group it's over 36,000 members they're they're part of our family in star wars steve spoltor thank you he runs the group thank you again to order 66 uh, jeff josh uh, Robbie, Tim, um, Mikey T, everybody out there. Thank you very much for your sponsorship. I'm Eric Walker. We'll see you next week. May the force be with you.